Having produced a super sub-performance in Monza last year, De Vries has so far failed to match that high bar of expectation. He is bottom of the standings, just one of two drivers without a point, and has already had enough crashes for some of the Alpha Tauri and Red Bull higher-ups to start having a serious look at the future of their newest drivers. Will Alpha Tauri fire the Dutch driver, and who is likely to replace him? Stay tuned to find out. The Dutchman earned his Alpha Tauri contract thanks to his 2021-22 Formula E Championship and an impressive one-off appearance for Williams at last year's Italian Grand Prix, in which he secured points with a ninth place finish. However, his debut as a full-time driver has been significantly more challenging. De Vries teammate Yuki Tsunoda has beaten him in all four races they have both finished, and Tsunoda holds a 5-1 head-to-head qualifying record, with a pair of 10th place finishes and an average finishing position of 10.6, Tsunoda has scored the team's only two points. Meanwhile, De Vries' best result so far is 14th, with an average finishing position of 15th. Excluding the outlying Azerbaijan Grand Prix qualifying sessions, De Vries has been, on average, 0.295 seconds slower than Sonoda. Although Sonoda has made it to Q3 once, his rookie teammate is yet to break out of Q2. It has been disappointing enough for Marco, and the Austrian has reportedly given the 28-year-old a three-race deadline to prove himself worthy of retaining his seat for the rest of the year. Red Bull chief helmet Marco has told De Vries that if he does not up his game at the next three races, Imola, Monaco and Spain, he will be replaced. The upcoming triple header Emilia Romagna, Monaco and Spanish Grand Prix all take place on well-worn European circuits that De Vries is intimately familiar with. The rationale behind the test is that if De Vries is going to perform well anywhere, it will be there. Even as Formula 2 and Formula E champion, De Vries was not really on anyone's radar for an F1 drive before last season, when a series of unusual circumstances put him in the mix at Williams and then Alpha Tauri. His stand-in performance at Monza for Williams gets way too easily underestimated, as if anyone could have scored points in a Williams that weekend just by turning up. He did have a good chance because if there was one race all year, a driver would want to step in for Williams, it would have been that one, but it was hardly a simple task. Teams sometimes make driver selections based on a single case study, and for De Vries, that case study was Monza 2022. He made an undeniably compelling case for himself. The decision to sign De Vries may have lacked rationality, as Helmut Marco's decision to choose him appeared to be based solely on one impressive performance. However, Alfa Tauri was facing a sudden driver puzzle with Sebastian Vettel's retirement, Fernando Alonso's surprise move from Alpine to Aston Martin to replace him, and Alpine's interest in Alfa Tauri's Pierre Gasly. The FIA was unwilling to grant Colton Herter, Alfa Tauri's number one target, a super license points exemption. They had no choice but to go for De Vries. Before he contested his first Grand Prix with the fans of base team, Red Bull motorsport advisor Helmut Marko spoke of the Dutchman becoming team leader ahead of Sonoda. But there have been no signs of that. Unfortunately for De Vries, the emphasis on impress me right here, right now seems to have counted against him. For now, the team is keeping faith in De Vries, with team principal Franz Tost having said at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix that it would be wrong to expect a rookie not to endure his fair share of incidents. He said, As I always say, there is a learning process and a crash period because if the drivers don't crash, they don't know the limit. This is a credit you must give them, otherwise it doesn't work. And there was no driver not crashing. I remember with Sebastian Vettel in the first races, he came back on the first lap, most often without the front nose. That's part of the game. Sonoda spoke up for his new teammate in Miami. The Japanese driver also stated that he struggled in his debut year, stating that there have only been four races this season. Sonoda said, We have only had four races, and that is nothing at all. That is nothing compared to my own rookie season. I have struggled a lot more races. Sonoda reveals that having a hard time in Formula One is not a bad thing at all and argues that it will actually make you a better driver in the end. Although, of course, it is annoying at times. The Japanese also stated that he and De Vries are on the same path when it comes to what they want from the AT04. If Red Bull did need to pull the plug on De Vries at AlphaTauri, 
then who will replace him? The first name that comes to mind is Daniel Ricciardo. Ricciardo is primed for an F1 return, saying at the Australian Grand Prix that he's already leaning towards pursuing a full-time comeback for 2024. As well as having been embedded in the Red Bull racing team at two races so far this season, he's also undertaken several sessions in the simulator. He's since confirmed that he's due to participate in at least one Pirelli tyre test this season in the 2023 Red Bull racing car, which will both help him keep acclimatised to F1 machinery and correlate his sim work. Speaking in Melbourne, team boss Christian Horner said he considered the Aussie to be about 10 minutes away from being ready to jump back in an F1 car as a full-time driver. But Ricardo has also said multiple times in the last six months that he would only consider a racing return with a leading team that would offer him the chance to score podiums. On a single lap pace, Alpha Tauri is the least competitive team on the grid and is just one point off the bottom of the championship table. Ricardo will not see this as the opportunity he's looking for to return to Formula 1. Reports have also revealed that his contract does not offer him the opportunity to step into a full-time race drive with Alpha Tauri. High-level sources have also suggested that if De Vries does not deliver the step forward that Red Bull is hoping for, then it is far from a given that Ricardo would be first in line to replace him. It is understood that Red Bull would, first of all, consider other youngsters on its junior roster. Marco said, if the worst came to the worst, we would fall back on our pool of young talent. We are talking specifically about Liam Lawson and Ayumu Iwasa. Ricardo is not an issue. Marco also affirmed that former Haas driver and current Mercedes reserve Mick Schumacher does not feature in our plans. Kiwi Liam Lawson has been considered the team's first choice reserve driver from the start of the season and is in attendance at most races races this year in that capacity, skipping those that clash with his other racing commitments. Lawson has been dispatched to Japan to compete in the Super Formula Series this year, where early success has made him a title frontrunner. It's the same junior pathway the Red Bull program used to prepare Pierre Gasly for Formula 1. Red Bull has reportedly been impressed with the Formula 2 winner's performances so far. Given he's only 21 years old, further strong showings would only lift his chances of becoming next in line to an Alpha Tauri drive as a long-term prospect. Alpha Tauri in its previous guise as Toro Rosso has been historically unafraid to hand drivers mid-season debuts. Another potential replacement is Dennis Horger. Dennis has an FIA F3 championship to his name, winning a title always being a tick in the book of Marco. Still, only 20, Oslo native Horger has been something of a second season specialist during his time on the F1 support bill. A debut F3 campaign in 2020 with the underperforming high-tech squad banked only one podium before a switch to junior powerhouse Prima for 21. The title was delivered with four wins, with his settling into F2 also bringing a couple of victories, but a lot of inconsistency. He scored points only once, fourth in the Austrian feature race, since claiming the feature victory in Azerbaijan. He is currently sixth in the early F2 standings. Though Ricardo might be the more popular choice in the event De Vries' F1 career meets an early F1 end, Lawson would likely be the preferred long-term candidate. De Vries' next opportunity to show Red Bull that he is worth keeping around will come at the Emilia-Romagna Grand Prix, with the race weekend at Imola taking place from May 19 to 21. Now over to you. What's your thought about De Vries' situation? Should he be replaced or given more opportunity to master the AT? Four. Let us know in the comment section below. That will be all for today's video. Thanks for staying tuned. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and notification bell so that you can always get to watch more amazing videos like this. See you in the next video.